beautiful, reimagined women. <laughs> yes, the Reimagined Women's Center, it's a business resource and innovation hub. The first in Baton Rouge. And so we're so thankful that you all joined us here today. Thankful to FDA, who's always promoting our center, and of course, Congressman Carter's office for, for having this evening here. So thank you so much for being here. My name is Dimitri Marquiao. Um, I serve as the district director to Congressman Troy Carter. Um, I want to um, make sure you know how important it is for the Congressman. One, that you're here, and two, that you receive all of the information and resources to get into this crisis. What I do want to do before we start is I want to introduce you to our staff. We actually have um, five satellite offices, and we have with us today Ms. Carissa Moore, who is, uh, yeah. she said, well, well, in fact, we'll go far here, but um, we'll make sure you have her card if you guys need her for anything. We welcome that you please reach out to her. Her office is located on Southern University campus, and uh, she is available to you for any of the services you may need in the federal agencies. Also with us today, we have Matthew LeBlanc, who's joining us here. He, he too works in the New Orleans office, and we're all available just to serve you. But not to delay, we want to turn this over to Ms. Joanne Lawrence again. We're just very grateful that SBA is here to make all of the important information available. Be sure to ask all of your questions and be sure to gather as much information as you can. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Dimitri, and good morning, everyone. And I can't thank uh, the Congressman's office enough and his district office staff for you know helping us to get the word out on what's available to small businesses who have been impacted by the drought. And I want you to think about the drought and the number of businesses that have been impacted. So it goes beyond just those who process or package the crawfish. There are other businesses that have been impacted. So as we're going through the presentation, you'll be able to uh, see that. And of course, uh, the Rear Badge and Women's with um, Mrs. Dana Williams uh, Smith and uh, Bridget being here to help support us, but offering the facility to us to be able to share this information with you. So we're going to talk about uh, SBA's assistance for recovery and resiliency and those resources that are available to you. So when we did the first series, which were uh, three separate sessions, one of them being in that room, we focused on the technical assistance that was available to you because we did not have a declaration yet. But at 12.30, after we finished that third session, we got word that the declaration had been issued and signed by our administrator so that when we did our fourth session, over in Morero, not only were we able to share with them the technical assistance, we were also able to share with them what you're going to see today. And this drought, when we, you look at how long it lasted, from uh, September 19th uh, through de uh, December 2023, it impacted all of the parishes of Louisiana. So that means that businesses in each of those parishes across the state have been negatively impacted. And we also have some contiguous counties in other states um, that were impacted as well. So those contiguous <coughs> excuse me, counties are in uh, Texas, Arkansas, and Mississippi. I don't know, you know if they're doing any outreach, but we're big on outreach so that our businesses in Louisiana will be aware of what's available to them. We have a virtual business recovery center uh, that's been uh, set up, and it's available to you Monday through Friday from 8 to 4.30. So you can email them or you can call them if you have uh, 
questions about anything. And we've set up a physical business recovery center over in Crowley. And I understand that on Tuesday, one was set up at Jericho in New Orleans, and one has been set up in North Louisiana, the shreveport Bossier area, to assist those small businesses. However, if there is no business recovery center that's near you, you still have access to the virtual business recovery center and you have access to the district office for assistance. So as we look at the major crawfish companies across uh, the state and um, looking at Madden's Parish, and, and for me, I, I just didn't think that that was a big um, area. But one thing that uh, Dimitri shared yesterday, I'm probably going to mess this up, yeah. is when the crawfish season starts, <laughs> December, and it goes through July, July 1st. And that's when the crab season starts. So you all probably know that. So you know that in between December and July 1st, businesses are suffering. So as you look at uh, Mathis Parish with that Louisiana Crawfish Company, and they're the largest shipper of crawfish, right? And then, and they also offer boiled crawfish. And that was something that was near and dear to the congressman heart, okay? Because immediately he talked about the boil houses, the, uh, the grocery stores, and the restaurants, who generally look to this season, you know, to make money. And there is uh, one business that the only time that they're working or in business is for jazz fest because that's what they deal in in crawfish. So we're trusting that with the working capital you'll be able to get from uh, this program that someone like that one business that um, that's their only job uh, once a year and it keeps them until the next year that this working capital will help them get through. Uh, this storm as well as, you know, then we look at uh, a Boyle's carriage. That's around Marksville, okay? And uh, they're one who uh, specialize in live and process crawfish. And then Rapides Parish and the county, okay? So Rapides Parish, of course, is Alexandria and areas around there. And then Ibermill uh, Parish, and then Acadia Parish, which is where we have set up a business recovery center. And when I reached out to the LSU Ag Center, that area, Acadia Parish, was one of the areas that they came back to me and said there's a big con concentration of distributors in Acadia Parish. And then, of course, St. Landry Parish, which includes units. So this uh, information was compiled based upon uh, the impact uh, study and determination that was provided to us by the governor's office. But look at the other industries that are impacted. So we have the festivals. And as I was coming in, I noticed uh, the, the crawfish festival and like a contest of, uh, I guess, uh, they're going to be cooking a whole lot of crawfish in different dishes. I've never been, my allergy is so bad, right? But festivals, and you might not think about a festival being impacted, but think about all those businesses that support festivals. We met a young man who provides portable toilets. So if that festival is <coughs> shut down or cut back, his business of providing portable toilets is going to be impacted the tourism industry. So people will come to Louisiana to partake of this delicacy, but also to participate in those uh, festivals, right? And then the hotels, going back to tourism, they won't have as high of an occupancy rate. You may think immediately about um, restaurants, right? But think beyond the restaurants and look at the food trucks who probably prepare some type of crawfish dish. And even caterers. Uh, one of the young ladies with whom we work um, made a crawfish rotel dip. And it looks so good. I wish I could have eaten some because it just looks so good. But even a caterer, someone like her, who specializes in that special type of dip, could be impacted. Uh, marketing agencies who are promoting you know, the cities, the parishes, the state, especially
crawfish season, of course the seafood wholesalers and other suppliers. So don't think that simply because you're not engaged in aquaculture or you're not engaged in processing the crawfish that you have been impacted and that this program won't benefit you. The data that was given to us as of Friday, March 22nd, uh, the Ag Center and SEA grant estimates that approximately 1,000 farmers will be impacted or have been impacted, 500 boiling places. You know, so even the grocery stores have the, uh, you can pull up there, they got their boiling station set up outside, and you can pull up there and get your crawfish uh, and restaurants and over a hundred processors. So a number of people have been impacted. What we're doing is engaging in a whole of community approach. So what does that mean for you? There is a minimum credit score, right? And if you miss that minimum credit score, it automatically results in a decline of your application. However, SBA is demonstrating some flexibility in that. And that is that if you miss that credit score by uh, two points within two weeks, you know, um, we will bring that application back in and reconsider that application. So that's what we're doing. Now I'm talking about credit scores, but I don't want you to just focus on the credit score because we will also look at your credit history, your credit report. Your credit report is going to tell us how you handle your business. If you're paying your bills now, and that's what your credit, rep uh, your credit report supports, then that means you're likely to be able to take care of the business of repaying the SBA loan. And then the, uh, the withdrawal, the business withdrawal. Okay, so if the application is incomplete, you know, or if you request information from you and you don't respond to us, then that's going to re result in, in a withdrawal, right? However, what we're going to leverage are our resource partners, right, where they can work with you to help you with overcoming those deficiencies that you had in your application. We have a, a hard copy of the application, but we're not encouraging you to send in a hard copy because that means somebody will have to take the time to input your data electronically. So we want you to submit that application electronically. But the reason we gave that to you is so that you can get an idea of the information that's requested on the application, and we will go through some screenshots, but also there's a checklist on that application. And then for the targeted economic injury uh, area, and this is, of course, will include all of Louisiana, all of our, our parishes, but also those contiguous uh, counties where, you know, they're like maybe out in a rural community and they're considered an underserved community, again, SBA will leverage the resources of our resource partners to conduct outreach in those areas. So we can reach as many small businesses as possible. And then for those, uh, the target business analysis, again, leveraging our resource partners to help you overcome those reasons for decline or to help you in getting your paperwork together so that you can request uh, reconsideration of that application. So these are the different types of disaster loans that are available. So we're not dealing with a physical disaster. And generally when there's a physical disaster, there is an economic injury disaster loan component. However, what we're dealing with with this drought is not physical, but rather economic injury. That negative impact that you suffer that's keeping you from being able to meet your normal business operating expenses. So this will be a working capital loan that's intended to help you meet your 
monthly financial obligations, be it rent, be it utilities, be it paying the mortgage on the building from which you operate, or um, if you have loans that you, you've taken out and you have to make those payments, these working capital funds can be used for that. However, you cannot use these funds for fixed assets. So say for instance, you have a food truck and it breaks down, right? And you want to buy another one. You can't use the uh, economic income disaster loan funds for that, right? Or you did take out a loan to help you weather this storm and now SBA is offering this long-term loan at a low interest rate, you cannot use these funds to pay off that loan. However, you can use the funds to make the monthly payments, but you can't use them to pay off that loan. And then, of course, for uh, physical disasters, we have our exact home disaster loans and flood mitigation assistance and wind mitigation assistance. So keep in mind, for purposes of this presentation, we're only talking about economic energy disaster loans for working capital. The maximum that you'll be able to borrow is $2 million, and that's going to be determined by uh, the schedule of liabilities that you provide to us, your monthly sales report that you provide to us. We will also look at your tax returns, and your financial statements. Those are some of the documents that you will need to submit uh, with your application. But that's the maximum that you can get on an economic injury disaster loan. These loans are direct from SBA. So this is the one time during a disaster that we can provide a direct loan. For our regular loan programs, for, uh, like our seven-day loan programs, you have to work with a lender or other uh, financial institution like a credit union or one of our intermediaries or a community development financial institution. That's for the regular loans. But when it comes to a disaster, SBA is able to make that direct loan to you. So you're not working with a lender. There are no costs associated with applying for a disaster loan from SBA, right? So they, I know that there are people out there, there's a lot of fraud that's going on, a lot of scams, right? We're not gonna call you and say, apply for this loan. We're gonna do outreach sessions like this in person. And uh, I have um, a meeting to, <coughs> to speak with the Small Business Development Center about doing some webinars so we can reach the rural parishes, right? And also North Louisiana, do some webinars. But we're not gonna call you and say, hey, you need to apply for this loan, right? If you call us and you have a question, then yeah, we're gonna share that information with you. But if someone calls you and promise they can get this loan, <coughs> can't you feel my passion? <laughs> if anybody could promise that they can get you that loan, then I would. But please, don't pay anybody uh, for this, this, this loan. You can work with our resource partners to assist you in putting together your application package. The funds come directly from Treasury, and that's why we're able to offer the loans at a low interest rate, because we only charge what they charge us to access uh, the funds. If you're approved for the loan, you're not obligated to take the loan. You have 60 days to say, I want this loan or I don't, right? So uh, we'll give you that amount of time. If you take the loan and you say you want to return it, you can do that. You have that option uh, to do so. Even if you have an SBA disaster loan already or any other SBA loan and you're in good standing, you would still be eligible for this economic injury disaster loan. So the general areas of eligibility, of course, all parishes in Louisiana. And as I mentioned, we have some contiguous counties in Arkansas, Mississippi, and Texas who are also eligible to apply for this loan. The filing deadline is December 23rd, 2024, for this, this loan application. Uh, generally, with the economic injury disaster loan, 
That's how much you have, how much time you have, nine months, right, to apply for this loan. But we're encouraging you to get your application in as quickly as possible, especially if you're struggling to meet your monthly uh, obligations, right, for operating your business. The eligible uh, entities are small businesses. Now, when there is a physical disaster, any business can apply. However, when we're talking about economic injury and we're advocates for small business, um, the eligibility is limited to small businesses and uh, small, uh, most nonprofit uh, organizations, small agricultural cooperatives, and in this case, small businesses engaged in aquaculture. So generally, where I get uh, EIDL, uh, small businesses engaged in aquaculture are not eligible, but for purposes of what we're dealing with now, they are. If you were able to purchase and maintain business uh, continuation insurance, there may be a deductible associated with your filing a claim. That would be considered an uninsured loss. So that means that you would be able to use these funds to cover this uninsured loss, right? And then uh, if this was a physical disaster, of course we have ineligible uh, uh, types of uh, deals like secondary, secondary homes and airplanes and all of that. Now, other restrictions on eligibility. If you had an SBA disaster loan, and you were required to maintain some type of insurance, and you did not, that means that you may not be able uh, to be eligible for this loan. Just wanted you to know some of the restrictions out there. The interest rate, 4%, okay, for 30 years, for uh, the businesses and small agricultural cooperatives, right, 4%. For nonprofit organizations, it's 2.375%. Uh, That's pretty low enough. When you look at that, say for instance, if you were applying for a regular SBA loan under our 7A loan program, and if the loan is over 350000 the maximum interest rate the lender would be able to charge is 3% above the lowest New York fund, right? So you look at what where prime is. So say for instance, prime is at 4% or 4.5%. That means if it was a regular 7 8 guarantee loan, you would be looking at 7.5% and not for 30 years, right? This loan is 4% fixed rate for 30 years. So it wouldn't um, be prudent for you to take this loan and say, hey, I don't want to take 30 years. 30 years to pay this loan off. I'm going to get a loan from the credit union and I'll pay that loan off in seven years, right? Okay, you're paying a higher interest rate, things happen. What's going to happen if you can't pay that loan? So we wouldn't encourage you to do that. What we would encourage you to do, you don't want to take 30 years to pay the loan off, pay it off soon because there is no prepayment penalty to pay off an SBA disaster loan. So no cost to apply, and there's no prepayment penalty if you decide to pay the loan, to pay the loan off, okay? Something else that our administrator was successful in getting is an abatement of the interest for 12 months from the date of the initial disaster loan disbursement. So what does that mean? Interest does not start to accrue on this loan until 12 months after the initial date of disbursement. That initial date of disbursement is critical because even if for some reason you were able to come back and get an increase on the loan and then that is dispersed, that's not going to change your initial date of disbursement. So hold on to that. Something else our administration was able to get in place is that you don't have to make your first payment 
for 12 months, right? After the initial date of disbursement. So we hear people say, well, I'm struggling now at the cost of this disaster. Why would I want to take out a loan and just add on more, more debt that I'm not able to pay? Well, we're helping you with that, right? By not requiring that you start paying until 12 months. That's a whole year after the initial disbursement. However, what I would encourage you to do is to go into your My SBA account, account which we're going to talk about, and set up the payments to start one year from the initial date of disbursement. Because we forget, right? I, I remember a lot of stuff. But if I got 12 months before I have to start making my first payment, I may not remember. But this is a way to make sure that when it's time to make that payment, you know, it can start right 12 months after that initial disbursement. We, uh, we will ask that you provide, or we may ask, that you provide a canceled check, right? That's to verify the bank account information that you give to us, that routing number and that account number. That's not for us to make automatic draws from your application. You know, someone unfortunately thought that that's what that cancel check was for. So I, I asked the question, um, <laughs> did you see the money coming out of your account? You know, but anyway, just know that that cancel check is, used, is not used to take money from your account, just to verify the information that you've given to us, okay? We will require collateral on loans over $25,000. Okay, so yes, we've had borrowers to tell us, well, I don't want to put a second mortgage on my home, so I'm only going to take $25,000. That's fine, it's up to you. We will not deny a loan solely for lack of collateral. However, we will ask you to pledge whatever collateral it is available to secure the loan. We're not in the real estate business, so we're not interested in taking your home and moving it out, because that only means that we ought to find a way to uh, sell the property, right? But rather, we have to have security for those loans that are over $25,000. And as I mentioned, the maximum maturity is 30 years, and it's 30 years with that fixed 4% interest rate. These are the different types of disasters. So when we have a physical disaster and it's major, we may get a presidential declaration. And that's where FEMA, Red Cross, the Corps of Engineers, and other organizations will come in and even HUD later on down the line. However, this is not a presidential declaration. This is an agency declaration or an administrative declaration based upon the data that was provided to us by the government we were able to do this. So this is what we have, the economic injury disaster loan, based upon uh, that data that the governor provided to us. Also, the Secretary of Agriculture uh, issued two declarations for the drop, and that was for farmers, and the dates are coming up pretty soon where the deadline uh, will be on us. So, uh, for any farmers, of course, we would be encouraging them to apply for that, uh, those declarations. So more on the SBA disaster loan programs. And yes, you know, when there's a disaster, just things are just not all out of place. People uh, need help. But generally here in Louisiana, what is it on which we focus? The season that we think about all the time. Hurricane. Yeah, but we know <laughs> it's not just hurricanes, right? So we have tornadoes, we have um, flooding, um, the you know like fires like over in Hawaii, right? Um, but and this front, so SBA is here to help with that recovery and also with the resiliency. So uh, I want you to focus on that second bullet there, just a reminder, 
This is an economic injury disaster loan. It is a working capital loan with a maximum of two million. And even if this was a physical disaster and your building was damaged and you were able to get a loan to help with repairing the building or rebuilding it, the combination of the two cannot exceed $2 million. So we're able to keep the interest rate low because we're only charging you, you know, that below market interest rate that's set quarterly based upon, uh, you know, what Treasury charges us. The money comes from Treasury, right? And even if the interest rate is lower nationally, that's not going to change the interest rate on this loan. It's going to be 4% for uh, businesses and the small agricultural cooperatives, and it's going to be 2.375% for most private nonprofit organizations. And notice, this is something I mentioned earlier, economic injury disaster loans cannot be used to refinance long-term debts. However, you can use the funds to make your monthly payments. We talked about the uncompensated uh, losses and you know and the restrictions, but also if you defaulted on any federal debt, uh, that includes SBA guaranteed loans, it includes our disaster loans, uh, it also includes the uh, it includes also um, student loans and FHA and VA loans. And when we look at that application, you'll see that that's a question to which you have to respond about whether or not you've defaulted on any debt. So we can't throw good money at the bad. We uh, have to make sure that you're taking care of uh, the federal debt. And you know, the unfortunate thing is the state has certain programs in place, but that money came from the feds. So once they check and they see that you're on that do not pay list because you defaulted on some federal debt, uh, even with those programs, the state will not be able to assist you. So if you are delinquent on your federal income tax payments, get in a payment plan with IRS be able to demonstrate to us that you're in that payment plan and that you're current on making the payments. If you're delinquent on your student loans, get in a payment plan and show us that you are in compliance with those, that payment plan and that you're making payments as uh, scheduled. That's why we want you to look at your credit report and see what's on there and go on and address any issues that are there because remember, only that creditor can take that off or work with you to meet that debt. So we hear sometimes, well, that's going to drop off in seven years. It doesn't matter that it may drop off the credit report in seven years. It still means that you owe that debt. So work with that creditor uh, to take care of that. And also remember that filing your income tax returns regularly is a federal obligation. So make sure we're, we're you're filing your tax returns and that you are making those payments. Something you'll hear us say is don't allow your accountant to be your banker. So what does that mean, Joe? What that means is if you have an accountant and they're writing off everything and everything you're showing them off, every year you're showing them off, then that causes us to question whether or not you have repayment ability. Because we're going to look at the tax returns and we're going to look to see if you're showing a profit on your tax returns. I mentioned that the filing deadline is December 23rd, 2024. Now, even though occasionally SBA can accept late applications, you would have to provide a justification of why you were not able to get that application in by the December 23rd, 2024 uh, deadline. The credit history portion is what I want to bring up on here. 
So, you know, yes, we look at that credit score, but we're looking at that credit history. And SBA says you must have an acceptable credit history or a credit history that's acceptable to SBA. So what does that mean? That means that we're looking at your report and we're seeing whether or not you're paying your bills and if you're paying them on time. Now we recognize that life happens. Somebody may have lost their job. Somebody may have gotten ill. Um, you know, and even death that may have caused you to fall behind on payments, right? And it's in those cases where we encourage you to work with that creditor. You know, I had uh, someone who lost their job, and as soon as he lost his job, he reached out to the credit card company and said, hey, I've been laid off because of COVID. I can't make these payments. So the, the company asked, will you be getting in any income? So he said, yes, I'll be getting unemployment. It's going to be about this month. So what the credit card company agreed to do was to stop the interest and remove some of the interest that was already on the balance, but then in exchange for him allowing them to do a direct withdrawal from his account monthly. They just want to get their money back, right? So work with them to see how they can help you mitigate that situation. So these are our basic filing requirements, and does everyone have a copy mm -hmm. of this, the application? We're going to go through some screenshots. Does everyone have a copy? No, I need not Okay, there it is. And a copy of the uh, fact sheet. We have the fact sheet also for the application. And the screenshots that we're going to go through will be for uh, this form. So you're going to be completing this electronically because I want you to know this. Although a paper application and forms aren't acceptable, filing electronically is easier, faster, and more accurate, right? So we will need you to complete this application electronically. Um, you'll need to, even though you will be uploading your tax returns, personal and business, we're going to need to get a copy of the transcript from IRS to verify the information that you provided to us. Unfortunately, you know, um, when there was discrepancies with some of our applicants from COVID Idol, they may have reported to IRS that they had $50,000 in gross receipts, and they reported to SBA $150,000 in gross receipts. When we get the uh, transcript, we see the discrepancy, right? Okay, so what's really going on here? So uh, make sure that when you start to complete your application that you have your tax returns handy so that you can put in the information from your tax returns. Uh, the schedule of liabilities, that's the SBA form 2202. That lets us know what your monthly operating expenses are, those things that you have to pay. The personal financial statement, is embedded in the application. So there's one that's embedded for each owner, officer, director, managing member, and all. And we'll see that in just a few moments. There may be other information that's requested by the analyst when they start um, reviewing your application. Okay, so it's important that we have current and accurate email addresses and phone numbers so that you can respond immediately when that request comes in. Some other information is with the tax returns, we're going to need all of the schedules and attachments to that tax return. We had someone, each time we asked for the tax return, all we provided was the cover sheet. And then after about 10 times of asking for that, he said, well, I didn't think you all needed all of that. Yeah, there's 34 stages. <laughs> we need it all, okay? So make sure you're sending in the most recent tax returns, and you'll see also we'll be looking for additional tax returns, but we need all of the attachments to that tax return. We will need a 
year-end financial statement. So say, for instance, you close your books on December 31st, we'll need a year-end financial statement for December 31st, 2023, right? And we'll also need an interim financial statement, balance sheet and profit and loss statement, no older than 45 to 60 days. And it may be that at the time you submit your application, that date on that financial statement may be within that period, but because of the volume of applications that may be received by the time the analyst gets to it, you know, it may be a couple of months beyond that. So the analyst may have may come back and ask for an updated financial statement. Just be prepared uh, to submit that. That's that current year to date profit and loss and balance sheet. And the 1368 is where I mentioned earlier that we want to see what your monthly sales figures are. And that's especially critical for economic injury disaster loans. It's going to let us see where you are now as opposed to where you were last year and how this disaster is impacting you negatively and impacting your sales. Basically, your sales have dropped. This is the landing page for our disaster assistance. And um, notice to the left, you can click that button that says apply for disaster assistance. But you see, we have the flooding, we have the wildfires, we have the hurricanes, we have tornadoes, and now we're dealing with the drought. And SBS there can help you through all of these scenarios. This page gives you information on the type of disaster loans we offer. And in this case, we're looking at economic injury disaster loans. And those are the loans that provide funding to meet your immediate operating expenses. And I clicked on that so that if you wanted to read more to see about economic injury disaster loans, you can do the same thing and read up on it or you can call us and ask us. It's an easy process. So the first thing you want to do is to check to see if there's a disaster that's been declared. And I'll show you how to do that. And then you'll apply for that disaster loan. The first thing you'll do is to set up your My SBA account. We're going to see how to do that. And you'll be able to check the status of your application. So once you click that apply, for disaster assistance, it's going to bring you to this page where you can select your location. So we're in Louisiana, so on the next uh, screen, you'll see that I selected Louisiana and I live in New Orleans. So I selected Orleans Parish, right? Once it comes up, you will click continue. You're applying for a business loan. This loan is for business for small businesses and also for the private nonprofit uh, organizations. You would click continue and then you're going to check economic injury because you're unable to meet your monthly expenses. And where it asks the question, would you like to view the Secretary of Agriculture declarations, you're going to check no because now we have a declaration for SBA and you click continue, and this is what we have. So you also, uh, click select on that, on that uh, disaster. It brings up the covered areas. So you see the dark grayish blue there is all of Louisiana, and then those surrounding little light gray colors are those continuous parishes in Arkansas, Texas, and Mississippi. And the next thing you're going to do is to set up your My SBA account. Okay, now, in setting up My SBA account, I'm encouraging you to work from your own computer or laptop or the computer or laptop of a trusted source because you want to be putting in proprietary information and you want to limit the individuals who have access to that application, right? So if by all means, 
use your own personal laptop or that of a trusted source. Uh, if you decide to use like one, say like if you go to the library or something, make sure you're deleting all of your information before you exit that computer. So you register in um, MySBA, then you go into click, start the disaster application, and then you'll complete the application. And we're gonna see how to do that in a moment. But this is what you would do to register for your My SBA account. So uh, when I did the screenshot, because I was working from my computer, my information came up, right? Like my first name, my middle name, my last name, all of that came up. And then I was asked to create a username. So when you create your username and your password, make sure that you're holding those items close to you, that you're not giving that to a whole bunch of folks. And with the recent breach, something that was brought out is that on the dark web, they're able to tell, like if you're using the passwords, the same passwords over and over and over and over, and they'll just keep trying until they get it to your account. So that's why we have stipulations on how to uh, create your password. And notice it's at least 16 characters, a number, um, a lowercase letter, an uppercase letter, and a special character, right? So make sure it's at least 16 uh, characters. And um, 16 characters for me may be a little bit hard <laughs> to remember. But if you need to write it down, write it down, but make sure wherever you're putting it, that only you have access to it. And respond to your security questions. But notice those personal details. You don't want the personal details, nor do you want those security questions in the hands of someone else who's trying to access your accounts. So with the application, if you look at that application, that hard copy that I provided to you, you'll notice that you will select that you're applying for economic injury, a disaster loan, but something else, you have to select your organizational structure, okay? So be it a corporation, a partnership, private nonprofit, an LLC, or as a sole proprietor. And that's, when you select that, that's going to populate the correct application for you to complete. So you wanna make sure that you check in the correct boxes on there. You're gonna see this twice, or a few times in the application where we're asking you to certify that this information that you're giving to us is true and correct to the best of your knowledge, right? We do that a couple of times in the application, that certification piece. I want you to notice <laughs> Never mind. But anyway, uh, notice that as your, your, it says disaster application, that's where you are going to start. And that's where you're going to put in the owners, the officers, and the directors in uh, this business, as well as any managing members. Notice that there's a previous button at the bottom of the screen. So we encourage you, if you need to go back a page rather than using that back arrow, to use that previous button so that your information won't be lost or you won't be knocked out of the system. And on this page, which looks just like the application uh, that I gave you, you see that you're putting in that information on uh, the owners. There is a red asterisk on this application that lets you know that everything you see with that red asterisk is a required field for you to complete. And as you are completing this information, there may be multiple owners in your business, and then you're going to put in those individuals' ownership information. There may, may be uh, you know, other managing partners or officers. 
you're going to put in their information as well. And what's going to happen after you complete that main section of the application, the system starts to populate that information that each of those owners, officers, directors, or managers have to complete. So notice for purposes of this application, they have their two owners, right? Notice that it's asking for that personal financial statement for each of those owners. So when that person is ready to complete that section, or you're ready to complete that section for them, you would click start, and you'll be able to go in and complete that information. Notice that uh, section, schedule of liabilities, the SBA form 2202, right? That's where you're going to list your monthly expenses that you have to meet. And then that 4506, which is the request for transcript. Notice there are uh, three sections there. So we need that transcript for each owner, but we also need a transcript for the business. And then the next section is where the primary person who's completing the application will upload the uh, tax returns. And notice I mentioned that you have to do a, a truthful certification a couple of times and then you're able to submit the application. So if you indicated that you have real estate on your personal financial statement, there's a section where you're going to include the information on that real estate as a part of the personal financial statement. For that personal financial statement, what you're providing to us are your personal assets and your personal liabilities. That's where, this is where you want to fit, put everything that you own individually on this personal uh, financial statement. The schedule of liabilities is in, embedded in the application and you would include the name of the creditor the original amount of the debt and the date. Uh, you're also going to tell us what the balance is. You're going to tell us whether or not you're current on uh, that date, that debt. Give us the maturity date, uh, your monthly payment amount, because that's going to help us determine how much you need in working capital funds. So all of that's on there. And then as you have additional creditors, you just click add another until you get all of those listed. And then you will click, click next. So say for instance you're here, and you say, oh, I forgot to include something on my personal financial statement. As I mentioned, click that previous button and not the back arrow. For the 4506, which is the request for transcript, Notice that it tells you what periods we want. So you, if you're, uh, you may see 2023, 2022, and 2021. If you haven't filed your taxes for 2023, then, and you're doing this after April 15th, then you need to provide a copy of the request for the extension in, in the application. And you can upload that. So we have the applicant business submitting the request for transcript, and we also have the uh, owners submitting the uh, request for transcript. You'll notice it says complete each request for transcript of the tax return as shown below. So it's going to give you the names, and when you're ready to do that, you would click start for each of those names. And once you upload it at 4506 successfully, you'll get a note. Whenever you have to upload information, it tells you upload it successfully. Then we ask you for the tax returns. And we're going to ask for the tax returns for the individuals as well as for the business. And here's that other section where you have to certify that you, what the information that you're providing to us is true and accurate. So notice that red asterisk. That means you're going to click that little block there saying I certify and click next. So notice the side-by-side -side comparison 
where we started with the disaster application portion being completed at page one, and then all of the sections populated for the owners and for the business that needed to be collect, completed. And then to the right, you see all those green checks. That means that they completed and uploaded everything that was required. Once you submit, it's going to tell you that the application has been submitted successfully. So we encourage you uh, to check, you know, before you press that final submit buttons. Now this section is if you were applying as a sole proprietor, that's what you check. And if the information is the same that you're going to be completing, I just brought it up so that you can see that it is the same. And the only difference is that it's going to be information on you and not information on anyone else. But notice those questions. If you would flip um, to this um, page on your application where those questions are, which is on that back page, and I want you to look at section 18. It's asking if you've been involved in any bankruptcy or insolvency proceedings. You just want to be uh, honest about that. Uh, uh, if you have any outstanding judgments, liens, or pending lawsuits against them. Um, in the past year, has the business or any listed owner been convicted of a criminal offense committed during or in connection with a riot or civil disorder or other declared disaster, or ever been engaged in the production or distribution of any product or service that has been determined to be obscene by a court of competent jurisdiction. So we know that that's addressing pornography at last military. Has the business or the listed owner ever had or guaranteed a federal loan or a federally guaranteed loan? And then it asks if you defaulted uh, on that loan or if you are delinquent. Because as I mentioned earlier, we can't throw good money at the bad. So we need you to take care of those federal uh, obligations. And that includes child support uh, payments and filing your taxes. Um, does anyone work for SBA or SCORE, any of our resource partners? That doesn't mean that you won't be eligible because we have SBA employees who have had to take advantage of our disaster assistance. And whether or not you are debarred from doing federal government contracting, and even now for our regular 7 8 loans, the lenders have to check the debarred list in SAM.gov. So likewise, we're having to do the same thing. So you'll respond to those questions, and then you want to go, and this is on both applications, provide any additional uh, comments that you have, and then if they're affiliated businesses, and with affiliated um, businesses, if you flip over to that next page where it says filing requirements under that second bullet, it defines affiliated businesses uh, as those that include but are not limited to business partners, subsidiaries, and or businesses with common ownership or management. So that's what the uh, affiliates are. And you would just disclose that information to us, and it may be necessary for you to provide the financial data like the tax returns on those affiliated businesses. And notice, with their sole proprietor, you only see that individual, and uh, that sole proprietor, and then you see that the uh, Schedule C is requested for the name of his company. Also the same thing for uh, the tax returns. And it may be that you file in the Schedule C if you're so proprietor uh, to your 1040. That just means that you're going to upload it in both sections. And once you've uploaded the information, you'll get a confirmation that has been uploaded successfully. Again, 
the certification that is truthful information and notice the green checks so that sole proprietor has completed everything and then you're able to submit the application. You'll get confirmation that the application has been submitted successfully. There is a message sent where you'll be able to check to see you know, what's happening with your application or um, you know, other things that may be going on with it, the uh, status of it. Um, and if you get a note that there's a problem with the system and you get that alert, what we encourage you to do is to stop and save all of your information before moving forward. We don't want you to lose it. So this is just some summary information. You can access that online application through your My SBA portal at lending.sba.gov, right? If you're going to go to disaster assistance, just know that we may request insurance that's for your protection, and it's also for the protection of the, this is the Small Business Administration. That's the customer service number and the email address for uh, the Disaster uh, Service Center. And preparing to apply. Okay, but before I move on, I want to ask if there are any questions. You good? Okay. I got a question. Um, as far as you're talking about the income tax, uh, just like many things you have a completed your income tax, you know, in the last two years. You have yeah. to request the extension, so you need to. You would you would need to provide a copy of the extension. But since we're talking about more than 2023, you need to provide an explanation of why you haven't filed 2022 yeah. or 2021, whatever the case may be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you have to get that extension and and they want an explanation. Yes, yes. So what is it that kept you from being able to? Uh, complete those tax returns because remember that's a federal obligation. Yeah. And we had someone who was not able to get yeah. assistance for COVID Idol because they hadn't filed taxes in five years. Yeah. Okay, it's kind of hard to justify that. Okay. Okay. But yeah. Just late filing. Just late filing. Just okay. trying to get all pull everything together. together. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, maybe it depends on what we remember. Okay, it may uh, come to you. Okay, go ahead. I know that there are some restrictions that you mentioned on what you can use the money on. Mm -hmm. um, just say it's you were gifted a building, but you want to convert the bill, you want to convert that business into your business, and you need to gut that building out to make it um, a fit for your business. Can you use the money to do that? No, you cannot. Okay. Okay. However, if you engage a contractor mm -hmm. or someone and um, they are, you know, like you're making monthly payments to them, that's something different. However, keep in mind, so your business is existing, Nice. Yes. Okay, it's existing, but now you need to have a new building that you require uh, um, renovated to fit your new business. Yes. You can't use the funds for that, but if, say, you got the loan to do that, you can make those monthly payments with that loan, or if this contractor uh, that you're using is building you monthly, you know, that's, you can make those payments. But you can't just take this loan and use it to renovate that building. Yeah. Okay. You good? Yes, of course. Yes. Here, you again, you said the uh, calculation method that we use to determine how much you will be owed to the Okay, that's going to be determined by the schedule of liabilities, the 2202 where you're listing those monthly operating expenses. 
It's also going to be determined by those monthly uh, sales that you submit to us on that. Is it the 1368? It's the 2202 and the 1368. That's going to help determine that along with your tax return. Monthly sales for the year 2022. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Your monthly sales. No, 2023. 
You're listing those operating expenses that have to be made each month. That's why you're completing the uh, 2202, which is the schedule of liabilities. So think of that in terms of your schedule of operating expenses. And then the 1368, your monthly sales, so that we can see the impact that um, this drop has had mm -hmm. on your business. It's not breaking the code, it's being honest in what you're submitting to SBA. That's why we want you to have those tax returns and those financial statements handy. Yeah. And that's why we have you. Yeah. Huh? I was trying to be um, I yeah. want to say like um, if things have changed, and I understand what you're saying, um, because what may be on the tax return, like you said, may not always be what's going on currently. And that's what I'm trying to explain. Is you know, you put the tax return for 2024. 2022, 2022, 2022, 2022. Okay, what has changed, you know, from the, the, from the disaster, how can, you know, I'm just looking to see what's the best way to put the changes, the changes. That's going to be reflected uh, in the tax returns because we should see a drop on, on your taxes, okay? It's also going to be reflected on the financial statement, mm -hmm. the profit and loss statement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why we ask for those documents. We'll be able to see the change. Yeah, and then, you know, if it looks like this is just, you know, too difficult, um, you know, to wrap your head around it, that's why we encourage you to work with our resource partners. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, Ada, here, Ada Womack Bell, mm -hmm. who is um, with the Small Business Development Center at Southern University. Blaine is upstairs. Mm -hmm. So Ada, tell them what you can do. Because they work with a number of disasters. They're our go-to resource partner, one of them. So Ada? So we can um, help you. So it won't be confused because I was listening to what she was saying. And it could be that um, you have to go back to those financial statements and kind of itemize and see where you are kind of verify. And to kind of match what your tax returns are saying now, mm -hmm. your financial statements may be less going into this year because of the gap or the difference. And that'll be a way you can show it as well. But we can assist you with that, with helping you um, kind of with your financial statements, understanding and read them, and then kind of um, uh, working with you with the tax returns and kind of referring you to some, some individual small business that can assist you as well. And then working with um, some other uh, resource partners that we help you if, 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 it's, if we're not in your area. I'm already in the Okay. But okay. <laughs> well, we can help you through that process. And we're um, located at Southern University, and we help you with the, the planning and stuff, your financial statements, understanding it. And we have a program, too, where you can get trained on understanding it as well as the SBB program. Thanks, Ed. Any more questions or comments? Okay. Thank you. Okay, so as we look at preparing to apply, just to bring out, uh, since we already covered this uh, in the previous presentation, um, on this contact information for all applicants, we need to make sure that we have good information on you. The email address and a phone number that's answered. Uh, and where someone's going to get back to the analyst or the loan officer, you know, immediately. Because that person may be assigned, you know, who's, you know, 100 or 200 applications. And when they reach out to you, they're trying to get information from you, get some answers to some things or some additional documents so they can keep your application moving. So make sure we have that current contact uh, information. Um, and just know that the loan officer may request additional information from you once they start looking at your application and processing it. Avoiding some common mistakes. That's why I say go back and check that application to make sure that that email address that you've given us is the correct one that the phone numbers you're giving us 
are correct ones. Because once that application is submitted, we can't change it. Okay, so when we communicate with you, we're gonna be communicating with you via email and or that analysts are the norm, so they call you, okay? Please don't change your email address, okay? And then send an email to SBA saying we need to update your, I need to update my email address, right? Because we're trying to protect your uh, proprietary information, so we're not just gonna change that like willy-nilly like, right? So make sure if for some reason you change your email address that you maintain access to the email address you have on that application as well as uh, the phone number. Ensure amounts entered match your tax returns. That's the receipts from the tax returns and the cost of goods sold. I talked about reviewing your credit report and addressing any issues on there. And please do not change your banking information. If for some reason you become disenchanted with that bank, keep some dollars in there that's gonna keep that account open because that's where the money is going to go. That's one of the hardest things to change. And if we send it to a bank or credit union or whatever, and that account is closed, guess what's going to happen to that money? Yeah. It's going back to Treasury mm -hmm. and not to SBA, right? And we can't just change that. There's like a, a formal process, a mod modification that has to be done, but then we have to verify that it's you that's asking us to change that information. So please, once you give us that banking information, don't change it. Um, again, check the status of any federal debt uh, that you have, you know, like your taxes that you owe federal and state, any guaranteed loans, child support, and disaster loans that you're covering on those. Make sure that you file your tax returns timely. Notice I have a bullet there of amendments. So I used an example where someone reported one thing to SBA and something else to IRS. And as soon as we brought that to their attention, they amended their tax returns. Okay, so now what's the truth? What are we supposed to believe? And sometimes that resulted in the application being declined. I mentioned responding to any request promptly, as quickly as you can, if for any reason, like the young lady, like both of you were asking questions, uh, please seek clarification. Ask the questions, that's why we're doing these sessions, and so just remember that the Disaster Customer Service Center is there to help you, the Disaster Business Recovery Center is there to help you. Please seek clarification. So Ada talked to you about the resources available from our Small Business uh, Development Center, and that's their uh, website address, louisianasbdc.org. If you're not in her area or if you're not familiar uh, with the SBDC, and you can go in and identify the SBDC that services your area and schedule an appointment with them. Our score, our, our score stands for Service Corps Retired Executives. These are our counselors and mentors toward uh, America's small businesses. And they're there where you can bounce ideas off of them, but also as the SBDC did with COVID, they can help you in pivoting uh, to assist you, you know, in taking your business in another direction if you need to the weather, this storm. Our Women's Business Resource Center is managed by early of uh, Louisiana. We don't have anyone here from uh, the Urban League today, but they're there to assist you with your growth and development, providing training, counseling, and technical assistance as well. Uh, and all of these are resource partners that SBA provides funding to, to assist you at no cost. Our Veterans Business Outreach Center, we have the number one Veterans Outreach Center in the country, right? <laughs> it's managed by Mississippi State University. So you may ask, why am I saying we are the best one in the country, the number one? Because they won the national award. 
as Reebok of the year. And uh, so uh, they spend a lot of time, those uh, counselors and trainers, spend a lot of time here in Louisiana conducting training for our veterans in Louisiana. You know, they've even said that we keep them busier than any of the other states that they serve. So we're happy about that and we're happy that they want. And I encourage you, if you have time, uh, to go on our learning platform. We have um, journeys there for disaster assistance, you know, like uh, developing strategies for recovery and, you know, during uh, and after, before and after disasters, developing strategic uh, marketing strategies and uh, hiring people. There's also something on there about supporting your people in a time of disaster. So just like you as an individual and your family uh, have been impacted, your employees' families have been impacted. So there's a journey on there that helps you with that. And you'll notice that it doesn't take you long to work through these different uh, journeys. So we encourage you to uh, take advantage of this resource that's available to you. Also, so that you can be aware of what we're doing, the outreach events, the trainings, the workshops, the conferences, sign up for our alerts, our email address, our emails, uh, and all we ask is your email address and your zip code. And that way, when we send something out, you'll get it. You'll know what's, um, what's happening, what's going on uh, in your area or in this state. So, um, for instance, next um, Thursday, we're having our annual, it's our 19th annual, Connecting Businesses with Contracts Conference. And it's hosted by uh, Southern University in collaboration with SBA, uh, Louisiana Economic Development, our Small Business Development Center, and Apex Accelerate. It costs you nothing to attend, but we sent that out uh, via Microsoft Dynamics through our email system. So that'll keep you uh, up to date. Someone shared uh, yesterday that they were not aware of our 101 Women in Business Conference that we just finished in Shreveport. But that went out for email, by email. So just sign up for the alert so you'll know. Um, this is my contact information, and since we have two of our member relations specialists here, I'm going to ask them to introduce themselves and share what it is that they do. Thank you, Ms. Jill. My name is Valerie Bonfi. I'm the lead member relations specialist um, for the Louisiana District Office. Um, my primary job um, with um, SBA is I work on the finance side um, with the Lakers Guaranteed um, Law Program. I want to ask a couple of questions, if, if you don't mind, Ms. Joan, um, especially to this lady here talking about your business mm -hmm. and the building that you inherit for mm -hmm. your business and you want to put the other combine them. Mm -hmm. um, and you were asking about what can you do because you use the disaster capital and you know you can't. Mm -hmm. But we can probably find a program for you under the seven day program, mm -hmm. um, which is a limited a bank loan.
Do you have an idol on now from that pandemic? I do. Okay. I will agree. I will urge you to go to your quarter and file for the portion. Mm -hmm. You did. Mm -hmm. All right. Right now. Right now. Okay. <laughs> That's good. So that way that free of your cash flow right now mm -hmm. until mm -hmm. you get through this through this set. I wanted to throw that out because if it didn't apply to you, maybe you know someone who, who needs that assistance and you can just share that information. Good morning, everyone. My name is Gerald Brooks. I'm one of the living relations specialists at Wilkins Gallery. And uh, as she said, we do our thing going around the state, talking to the banks, talking to the lenders, making sure they understand the SOP and how the SBA works and what we do. And um, I think this that really kind of covered everything on the things that are going on with the SBA in Louisiana now. And um, if you're not satisfied, if you can't find your way, you still feel like you need some assistance, be sure to get our business card. We'll find your way. Okay? Thank you. Okay.
to ask for this declaration. But even before we had the declaration, he had his team working so that we could start getting the information on. So that's why we're saying it's been a good three weeks. All right, guys. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.